Well, I've had this fire extinguisher for, I think, nine years. And I've never used it until last night. Looks like it was past due for an inspection, but it needs to be recharged now. Well, there's the first tire. So we're about two miles on the other side of my house. So we're about six miles away from where they finally ended up. Now there's most of the second tire. So that's about, I don't know, 200 yards down the road from the first one. And right here they had some kind of a big problem. It still didn't stop. See, it wasn't hard to follow them. You see right here, they made the corner. Right here, there was a tire on fire. There it is. <laughs> kind of surprised that the Police let them leave it here. I thought they would have had to have it towed out of here. So it looks like they removed the foam insulation board from the back of the trailer. So when I saw the trailer go by, this is what I saw. The outside tires and rims were basically completely gone. But it still had the inside rims and tires. And then when I pulled up here, I think one of the inside tires was the one that was on fire back there. And then this front inside tire was on fire. And it was burning through the wood on the deck and had gotten the, the actual forklift on fire. So I hit the bottom here with my fire extinguisher, but it just, it wasn't enough to put out that big tire. And then, sure enough, within about 30 seconds of us kind of exhausting all of our extinguishers and water that we had, that tire actually blew out. Big puff of flames. So yeah, I don't know. This is an Econo line trailer. I think that's what they call it. So it's actually got, well, I'll show you on the other side, but it's actually got tires on the inside and the outside. Yeah, there you go. So it's an Econo line. And I think it's got four 7,000 pound axles, if I'm reading this right. So a 28,000 pound axle capacity. So that this trailer's not overloaded. I don't think that's the problem at all. It's just the tires must have been low or, or flat or something and they ran it for too long. You see the setup here. It's got four real short axles and then the springs are actually between the tires so there's an outside set of tires and an inside set of tires. It's the only trailer I know that's set up this way. But these are real heavy heavy duty heavy built trailers. Alright guys sorry if there's some wind noise I didn't have time to grab the fancy microphones this morning. Uh, last night about 10 minutes before 10 o'clock I was sitting in my house watching a documentary on Netflix called Tread. It's about a guy who goes crazy and armor plates a Komatsu bulldozer and uses it to basically destroy an entire town in Colorado. Highly recommended. Anyway, I heard a horrible racket out my window and I looked outside and I saw a Ford dually truck pulling this trailer and on the right side here there were no tires just a stream of sparks flying off the rims. And I knew how that was going to end, so I threw my boots on, ran out to the shop, grabbed a fire extinguisher, jumped in my truck, 
and it wasn't difficult to follow them. This is where I found it. The outside tires were gone and the inside tires were on fire. They had a small kind of a one-time use fire extinguisher and they'd already extended, you know, used that up and they were dumping bottles of Gatorade and ice from an ice chest on the fire trying to, to put it out. So I used my whole fire extinguisher but it just wasn't enough to get that big tire to go out. So I called 911. They answered right away. I had a police officer here within about five minutes of me calling, maybe four minutes of me calling. Then an ambulance showed up about two or three minutes later and then finally the fire truck showed up about, I don't know, maybe five or six minutes after the, the police officer was here. So I don't know, 12 minutes or so after I made the call, the fire department was here, which is pretty good. I mean, we're in a rural area. This is a volunteer fire department. These guys aren't just sitting around, you know, the firehouse waiting for a call. They had to drive down there, get the engines all fired up. They got it out right away with the right equipment, but yeah, there was, wasn't a whole lot we could do once the fire extinguishers were gone. So, bad day for these folks. So the people who were pulling the trailer had also called 911, but I don't know if they knew exactly where they were, so I was able to give them a little bit more precise location. Uh, they were thinking though, they did take the propane cylinder off of the forklift before the flames got up through the deck of the trailer. So. They did a good job there, they just, <laughs> I don't think they should have skipped their pre-trip inspection and they should have been paying attention while they were going down the road. That's unbelievable to me. I wonder what they're going to do with it. It's going to have to have four rims and four tires. It looks like at least one hub that cap's missing off the one, the bearings are kind of hanging out. So it's going to be a big mess. Boy, they're lucky that the hydraulic tank didn't get on fire. I don't know if this forklift is savable or not. I'm guessing the wiring harness and everything's all burned up inside there. Well, we're only about four miles from my shop. I was gonna leave my card and see if they needed some help, but I think I've got enough problems already. I'm assuming that whole rig is gonna be a total loss. I mean, the frame's been real hot, and if the wiring harness and everything's burned up on that forklift, it's probably not worth fixing it. So we'll go home.